Within my part of the centre, uh, what we can do is provide better understanding of the effects of age. We can provide diagnostic tests. We can't provide cures. We might be able to provide um, external aids, um, so ways in which we can support people uh, to deal with uh, changes uh, across age. To give one example of the kind of outputs that we might uh, have from our research, that uh, one uh, recent development has, to be to, to, has been to turn uh, some of the tests that we've been developing into clinical tests that can be used for detecting the onset of Alzheimer's disease fairly early on. Uh, and this has involved uh, very simple combinations of tasks. So one difficulty that people with Alzheimer's disease appear to have is the ability to do two things at once, uh, simply like walking and talking, for example. Uh, we've got um, standardised measures of that kind of ability. And it's something that seems to be fairly well preserved in older, healthy people, but seems to be specifically impaired in people who have Alzheimer's disease. Um, it's also quite well preserved in people that have other, other kinds of disorders, like, for example, depression. Um, that people with depression do have a problem in memory, remembering things, but they seem not to have a particular problem in doing two things at once. Um, and that's a complete contrast to Alzheimer's disease. And quite often, chronic depression and Alzheimer's are confused um, at the time of diagnosis. So it's a way of helping um, have more accurate diagnosis. It can also be used for long-term follow-up. Uh, so, for example, we can track the progression of a disease by looking at how this ability to do thing, two things at once deteriorates. But it can also be used for assessing any kinds of treatment that come along. So a ph pharmaceutical company comes along with a new treatment that th they suggest is going to help um, uh, Alzheimer's sufferers. Then we have tests available to assess whether or not that treatment is effective. And we can do that non-invasively, simple cognitive tests, very inexpensive, that can be administered by somebody with fairly minimal training. Uh, so you don't have to send them off for the MRI scans or uh, other kind of invasive medical um, assessments. Uh, the cognitive assessment can tell us whether there's a genuine improvement as a result of this intervention uh, or whether it, it's simply that um, people are slightly more motivated uh, to perform better or they've been practicing the tests because the kind of tests that we've got uh, are not prone to improvement just simply because you've done them more than once. Um, so this, that's the kind of, of application that we can have from this, uh, this, this sort of work and that is targeting tests at specific um, sorts of disorders. So it's not enough to be able to show that somebody's general mental function has deteriorated. That tells you that they've got a problem. It doesn't tell you what the problem is.